Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here. Welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Lobotomy and Asylum Field Day where we're just about to start episode 3 and turn 4. Just before we do, just a couple of clarifications and minor corrections from last time. And uh, basically they surround durability on weapons and uh, Yes, I was trying to diddle myself again. One I did notice in editing, which was the kitchen knife. And it has an ability whereby you can manipulate the die rolls. Uh, you can manipulate two dice by a total of one. And uh, we did roll a one, but we're manipulating that up to a two. So it did not take any durability damage. And then Blake pointed out that broken glass has a very similar ability, but instead of being able to manipulate the scores of two dice, you can just do it with one. And that's good because we only rolled a single one with broken glass. We're gonna change that to a two. And that now has no durability damage. Uh, the durability damage on the other weapons, uh, the wrench, that stays at two and uh, when Nicholas was attacking I think it was the nurse um, he rolled a couple of ones so uh, on, on two attacks so that's got two durability damage and Helena as well she uh, she rolled a one with a gas pipe attack so that has got one durability damage right that is it for corrections what we'll do now is we'll go straight into the character phase And here we are at the character phase and we're still with the characters because we're going to do our cooldowns first and uh, as I mentioned I'm going to do all the cooldowns for all the characters right at the beginning because then I won't forget. So there's only uh, two characters that have skills on cooldown and that's Bernard and Beatrice. So uh, we'll do Bernard first. His dual wheel will go down so we've only got one turn left on that and uh, we actually refresh his hit and run so that is back and available and Beatrice her psycho gambler goes down to one so we've only got to wait one turn for that as well uh, first player is Helena Swan so what we're going to do is we'll go back to the board and we'll see what she's going to do and here we are with Helena she's got the yellow base down here we've also managed to, because we haven't got a, a lot going on in the central tile there i've managed to get the uh, dice tower in so hopefully that'll save us a bit of moving back and forth so what's helena gonna do with her first action she's actually going to use one of her skills and uh, she's going to use hypnotizing eyes which is an attack give her eight dice it's got a range of one if this attack deals damage, you can move one space in any direction and recover a health. She hasn't lost any health, but moving a space in any direction would be very helpful. It's got a cooldown of five, so we'll put a cooldown marker on it. And what are we going to attack? Well, obviously, we're going to be attacking that scavenger that is just up there in the next space. There he is. Well, I'll get rid of him before he gets in amongst us and starts attacking. So we get eight dice. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna roll the brown dice. We need at least three, I think, Th three hits. Yes, we do, we need three hits and we're not gonna lose any to defense because it's a scavenger. And we hit on a four or better. So come on, Helena, four or better. Eight dice. And there's two sixes for a start. And two fives and a four. So yes, we got five hits there. That's more than enough. We get one of our progress points back. So we're back to one progress point. We'll put the scavenger across here with his mates. And because we killed it, we can move that cooldown one. So hypnotizing guys is now on four down from five so that's that's a good start okay and yes she could recover health if she'd lost any she hasn't but we can also move as per that ability so she's just going to move one there to the space that the scavenger was in and for her final two action points she's going to move again so she's going to go one two up here into space seven she's just outside the guard room up there 
which has got a locker in it and uh, she's also next to space six which has a memory token in, in, in it so hopefully we'll be able to pick that up okay that is it for helena next up it is bernard so let's uh let's focus in on bernard and here we are with bernard bernard's got the green base there and uh, let's get rid of all these get rid of those we may be using them again in a moment but we shall see so we'll get rid of those and what's the first action he's going to do remember he's got four actions well what he's going to do is he's going to take a look at this memory token here so for an action point he's going to pick that up so that is another progress point we've picked up a memory we'll get his memory deck from just over here and then we've got to find out what memory he has regained there are five that are generic to everybody and there is also five that are specific to him we'll do a cut let's see what we get oh it's a bernard memory if there was a Nobel Prize for lying, I would win it. Or at least I would tell everyone I did. Nice one, Bernard. I like it. I see what you did there. Been there, done that. Skill permanent, cost none. Ooh. Gain a free additional success in every locker searching and door opening test. So that is excellent. So we'll put this over here. So that is like having an extra ability and uh, not only that it doesn't cost anything it don't cost uh, an action point nothing like that so that is cool gain a free additional success in every locker searching and every door opening fantastic so that's going to be really useful just put this back and yes nice find for bernard that's his first action point he's got three left so I think he is going to do some attacking as well. He's going to move one into here with this mental patient. And he's got two um, action points left. So he is going to attack. Now he can't use dual wield. And uh, we don't need to use hit and run, I don't think. So we'll just, uh, we'll just attack. I think we'll attack with the broken glass because it gives us five dice rather than four and uh, he hits on a five plus so one two three four five and the good thing about having other characters here even if we don't polish this guy off hopefully one of these two can come in and finish the job off so come on Bernard you don't want to rely on everybody else fives or sixes please he gets one five he gets one six he gets a one now we've got a we've got a bit of an option here like there are two ones unfortunately so even if we use the broken glass ability on these on one of these ones we're still going to get a durability loss yeah so we're not going to use it on those ones we're going to use it on that four so we're going to get two fives and a six so that's three hits let's have a look at the mental patient card now he has one defense so we're going to lose one of those but we are going to get two hits on the mental patient so two hits go on to the mental patient we'll just pop those there and we have got to pop a durability loss on the broken glass, unfortunately. And we'll get rid of those two ones. <laughs> and we'll pick two other dice because for his final action, he's going to attack with the broken glass again. So, come on, Bernard. He gets a six and two fours he does roll a one again and uh, we are going to use it this time so it's only going to be one hit and unfortunately that one hit is going to get stopped by this guy's defense so unfortunately we weren't able to take him out because we've got two other characters sort of following in bernard's wake what we're going to do is um, 
we one really one really because i don't think nicholas can make it that far but Beatrice can and I think she'll be able to polish it off so we'll just leave it at that okay so that was it for Bernard's go at least he got two hits on that mental patient next up it is gonna be Beatrice and here we are with Beatrice so for his first two action points she's gonna go one two and she's gonna join Bernard in uh, that space with the mental patient and for a final action point she's gonna attack She's going to use the club. So that's going to give her five dice. And we may lose a durability to this to add one die, even after the attack roll. So we'll keep that in our pocket. She does hit on a three plus. So hopefully we won't even need that. So we're going to be rolling five dice. Roll five of the green. Seeing as uh, the blue went, I've gone a bit cold on it, it's the blue. It's not the blue, the brown. So, uh, five dice, threes are better. Well, we've got a couple of fives already. We've got a six there, we've got a four there. We do have a one, unfortunately. So, uh, we are going to lose a durability of the club. But we do have more than enough to actually kill the mental patient, lose the low, we'll lose the lowest there due to his uh, defense, but we still get three hits. So that is more than enough because he only had two health left. We get rid of the mental patient, yet another progress point. So we're up to three progress points. Remember, if we get a blue star during the movement phase, then we'll lose all of those progress points because this is such a nice, easy game. Now, because Beatrice actually killed that monster, it means that her Psycho Gambler ability is now totally refreshed. It was on one, it's now completely refreshed. She has all her skills back, which is good news. Okay, that is it for Beatrice. Next up, it's our final player for this round. It is Nicholas Jackson. And here we are with Nicholas. And I think what Nicholas is going to do is he is going to run. Yeah. So that will give him two extra action points. And all he can do is move. So he's got five movement, essentially. And uh, what he's going to do is he's going to go one, two, three, four five he is heading for that locker there and uh, just to have a look what we're looking at here we've got a locker here two doors to get to it we'll have a look see if we can get to it but you know that's wasting a bit of time there is a locker here behind another door and uh, a locker here in the guard room we've got that memory token which hopefully hopefully helena will pick up next turn and we do have a memory token here so hopefully we'll at least get those two memory tokens next round yeah and uh, possibly be able to search this here so that'll be good that would be excellent for us and uh, other than that i don't think there's anything else it's uh, straight into the monster phase And here we are at the monster phase. So that means, yes, we get the good old movement deck. And let's quick shuffle and a cut, see what happens. And that is a green, thank God. So anyway, compelling power. Characters can use one insanity to gain one defense for this turn or plus one to attack rolls for the next turn. We won't bother, thank you very much. And uh, yes, we have got the green star. We lose one progress. What we're gonna lose is, uh, again, we're gonna lose the scavenger. So we'll lose the scavenger. We're down to two progress points, which is just the mental patient and the um, memory token thing. Okay, we've got no memory shrine coming up and we have got no warden movement, which is good news. We will have a spawn of a mental patient and a scavenger, but that is after monster movement. I'll just put that down there. I'll do the monster movement. I'll be back in a moment. 
there is going to be a slight change so i'll talk you through it because it's basically because nicholas has gone there so he, he he's gone a lot nearer to uh, some of the monsters over here okay i'll do the monster movement back in a moment okay i'm back so the monster movement yes a lot of these guys have been affected because nicholas has actually got a bit closer now so the nurse that was coming down this way, she's actually backtracked because she'll be able to ooze through this door, then ooze through that door and get to Nicholas. That is the quickest way for her now. The mental patient carried on. He moved one here. That's because it's as broad as long. It'd take him just as long to go around this way than it will this way. So he's just carried on. This um, scavenger here, he was going this way, remember, but he now he now knows he can sense that Nick's there so he's gone up this corridor here and he's getting ready to ooze through that door remember my house rule once it once these guys these basic monsters ooze through non-revealed doors they can't do anything yeah so that's an important house rule to remember uh, what else uh, this particular uh, scavenger here he's carried on going this way because again going round that way to Nick it's just as far to go and get these guys so he's going to carry on he went one two to here this mental patient that was here he's gone to the central tile he's going to go up there this scavenger that was down here he's moved up there the mental patient that was here has moved to here and the um, nurse that was there has moved to here because she's got to go here before she can go through the door and then they're going to head up this way as well and there was one more nurse she was uh, outside here, but now she's oozed through the door because it's quicker for her to get up this way. Again, oozing through the door doesn't actually, the house rule doesn't really kick in because all of those that have just oozed through doors now, they're not attacking. So uh, it's just like normal movement really. Okay, but they are exhausted as per my house rule. Okay, so that is the movement. And now we need to roll for... The mental patient and the scavenger so mental patient first um, I'll move this here just you might be able to see it better you couldn't really see what I rolled last time <laughs> but um, yes so we need the d12 and the d4 and the mental patient is going to it is that's an A that is A5 actually I'll zoom in a bit so you can see it won't be a second Uh, can you see that that's a5 so we'll take mr mental patient we'll put him on a5 which is a little room off to the side that you just can't quite see but he's behind a door which is helpful and then we're going to roll for the scavenger and where's the scavenger going to end up d11 is where the scavenger is going to well, knock that over D11, so the scavenger is down here, and uh, oh, he's in that room the original scavenger was in, <laughs> over there on on the uh, on the detail. But uh, yes, so those are our two monsters. But uh, from what I recall, we killed two monsters this turn as well. We killed a mental patient and a scavenger, so uh, we're keeping a lid on the monsters. They haven't increased, so that is good. Okay, so that is it for this round. I think it was, what was it, round four. So let's go to the character phase of round five. And here we are at the character phase. So our first player is back to Sonny Bernard. So we'll pop the token back up here and yes cooldowns let's sort all the cooldowns out so helena she goes her hypnotizing gaze goes down to three and bernard gets his dual wield back which is great just in case we get swamped by a load of monsters so everybody has got all of their skills apart from helena who still has hypnotizing eyes on the durability front broken glass has took a durability damage the club has took a durability da damage and the wrench and the gas pipe have stayed at the damage they already had okay first player bernard let's go back to the board see what he's gonna do 
and here we are with Bernard unfortunately Bernard has got four actions because he's gonna have to use them all to get to this memory uh, token here so he's gonna go one into here two into there three into there and he's gonna use his fourth action point to pick up another of these memory tokens so we've got picked up two of those now we get another progress point so we're back to three and uh, we've got to get his memory deck again won't be a moment because he gets an opportunity to pull a memory out so we'll do another quick shuffle and a cut and uh, see what he gets this time and this is one of the generic ones, Memory Strip 2. Your childhood friend sits in the hallway waiting to meet you. His smile fades as you approach. What have they done to you? He looks around to see if you are alone, then puts his arms around you. Let me help, he whispers, while constricting you harder. You struggle to take a breath. Soon you will be free. So we've got to do an imagination test. And if we lose, we lose an insanity. <laughs> will this still fit in here? Yes, it will. Well, that's annoying. Um, just pop that there for a second. And uh, try and avoid all the glare we're getting. Will it fit there? There, that's better. Okay, imagination test. Ugh, awful. So his imagination is only six as well. So let's hope we roll low. We need less than six on 2d6. And uh, yes, we roll a 10. So he's lost another insanity. And uh, yeah, that's going to move him to two insanity, which is not good. I wanted to save these insanities for, um, you know, later in the game. But uh, it looks like uh, we're not going to be able to. Okay, so we get to keep this. So we'll put it with the other one. Now we've got two of these now and we've got to make a decision. Because we've got two, we can put these in and gain one of his skills. But obviously if we do discard them and put them in, we lose Bernard's memory here, which uh, means that this skill gain a free additional success in every locker searching and door opening test goes out the window. What I'm gonna do is I'm not going to turn them in just yet, yeah. But it is an option for us. I like to keep this Bernard memory and um, its permanent skill that we've got here for the time being. We may pick up another memory, in which case uh, we could keep the Bernard memory and get rid of memory strip uh, two and whatever else we get. Or it may not. It may no longer be, you know, really helpful to have this permanent skill and we can just hand these two in yeah but for the moment we're not going to hand them in for an extra skill we'll keep those off to one side so he's got two there that is it for bird because that took him all four of his action points and he has now finished so who is after bernard after bernard it will be beatrice and here we are with beatrice she's going to move one and then she's going to take a look at this door here. So we'll get the door bag. Give it a shake. And we'll pick one out. And it is... Yes, it's open. I nearly put that back in. Don't put it back in, Paul. Because the door is open. So it stays out of the bag. And we get rid of that door. So now we're free to walk into here which is, is cool, but we've still got another door there. Yep, so uh, do I go further into that room? So that was one, two to have a look at the door. I think so, three. We'll just go in here. We'll try and uh, search all this suite of rooms, and then uh, once we get all the monsters sort of coming towards us, perhaps kill a couple, and uh, then we will switch our um we'll switch our direction and uh, we'll go to another quadrant and start clearing that out okay so that is it for beatrice next up it is nicholas jackson and here we are with nicholas and he's going to use his first action point to move into here 
and then we're going to do a search test so we're going to search this locker yeah so I'll get the uh, I think we've got enough room to pop the tower in we have just about and uh, what we'll do is we shall do a search test and what you do on a search test is you use your imagination but this time you don't do 2d6 and um, you know try and get under your imagination what you actually roll is the number of dice that you've got in your imagination which in his case is seven so one two three four five six seven and what we're looking for is four fives or sixes and we'll just put them in there because why are we looking for those successes well it depends on what we pull out of the bag so this is what is in that locker so we've got one right at the bottom and it was a set of filing cabinets and what was in them well here we go oh this is bad see how high all of those are so in order to find anything in there we have to at least roll four successes out of seven so this is going to be tough um some of these are a lot easier than others the one good thing is we do not have a monster spawn icon so even if we fail we just fail so we're looking for four successes at least so uh, here is seven dice, four fives and sixes, and successes. Oh, we got three sixes, a five. We got five successes. There were just two threes there that didn't succeed. So we can pick any of these. So we can have a weapon, we can have equipment, or we can have meds. I think we will take the weapon. An interesting um, aside to this, if we'd, like say, if we'd had enough imagination, and we'd rolled nine successes we could have also or eight successes we could have had a weapon and a med if we'd rolled nine successes we could have had uh, either a weapon and a med or an equipment you can't get two you can't double up on one so if you get eight successes you can't have two weapons but uh, if you do get enough successes you can get more than one thing so that's pretty good so uh, what I'll do is we'll discard that and that is now an empty place on the board there was a, a set of filing cabinets there but he's rifled through them and he's going to take a weapon so we'll get the weapon deck it's only because his wrench his wrench is down to two so uh, let's have a backup we weapon for him we'll give it a quick shuffle and a cut what do we get? He gets a fire extinguisher. You know what? You shouldn't be keeping fire extinguishers in filing cabinets. They should be on the wall. Easily accessible. I don't know. Right, anyway, fire extinguisher. It's uh, five dice. Can be destroyed to, to use eight dice. And uh, obviously this symbol here, the snowflake symbol, it means it will frost uh, an opponent. So... Uh, they'll sort of freeze in place on and they've got to spend an action point to get rid of that and it's large so this takes up two of his um, inventory but it's okay because he's only got the wrench and it's got five durability so we'll pop that with him that is another progress point by the way we have searched a locker and found something so we're up to four progress points we are getting there so uh, good stuff Oh, oh no, we're back up to three, aren't we? I think we're back up to three because we lost one, didn't we? Yes, we uh, we got a green star last turn, so we're back up to three. Okay, so he's found a fire extinguisher. So he moved one, an action point for one. Now, he could have a look at that door, but he's not going to. The reason he's not going to have a look at the door is because it may be blank. And if it's blank, then... <laughs> That um, scavenger is just going to come straight through that door and attack him. But hang on. Having a think here. Having a think here. Um, he will. He is going to do it because it is Nicholas Jackson. And he does have two defence, doesn't he? And yes, let's check the door. We'll check the door. I think in the long run it's better to know what the door is. 
So it's just going to check the door with its final action. You never know, it might be barricaded or locked anyway, so we'll have a look, and it is locked. So another three. We're getting all the three locks. There are some there that are five locks, and of course I've knocked some over. Pop that back there, that can go in there. And uh, yes, we get rid of the door. And we'll put that three in there. So that is locked. So what happens now is because that's been revealed, this scavenger will now go, can't get in there now. So it's going to start coming back this way. But what it does mean is it's going to funnel all the monsters that way. That's the only way they can get in now. So we are going to, in, in a way it's good because uh, hope they're all strung out. So they should all be coming one at a time and uh, that should make them more easier to dispatch. But, you know, until such time as we actually open one of these locked doors, it does mean we're rather cut off. And uh, the monsters have got us in a bit of a bottleneck. But uh, hopefully, you know, we can use something like the fire extinguisher just to break one of these doors in or something like that. In fact, I don't think that works on locks. No, it doesn't work on locks. It just works on barricades. So, uh, yes, we're going to have to try and pick some of these locks at some point, I think. Anyway, that is it for uh, Nicholas Jackson's Go. Next up is Helena Swan. And here we are with Helena Swan. First action, yes, she's going to cross across to where this memory is. She's going to pick that memory up for her second action point. So we'll have to get her second... Uh, sorry, we'll have to get a memory deck and just pick that up. Okay, so we've got a memory deck. Here it is. And let's see what she remembers. Cut. And she gets memory strip two, which is exactly the same as the one that um, Bernard just got. This is why they should have a few different ones of these. Um, I won't bother reading it again because uh, you've already you've already heard it this episode. And we've got to do an imagination test. Fail and we lose one insanity. Um, she does get to keep this. As mentioned, when we get two of them, we can sort of turn them in for one of her personal skills. So we'll put that over here. But we've got to see whether she loses an insanity or not. So I'll get hold of, whoop, if I don't knock everything, I'll get hold of the Dice Tower. Can we still see everything? Yes, we can. Okay, right, Dice Tower. And because it's a test, we just roll two of these dice. And she has got a imagination of seven, so we want less than a seven. Come on, less than a seven. Oh, a six. Yes. So she doesn't lose any additional um, insanity. So that's great news. Brilliant. So that's the end of her second action. What's she going to do for a final action? She is going to have a look at that door here. So she's going to move up to that door here and she's going to see whether we can get in or not. So let's pick one of these out and it's barricaded a three barricade not all of these door tokens have the number three on them <laughs> i assure you so we get rid of that now that's annoying because there is a locker in there so that is annoying so i'm getting rid of i mean she could use because that's got three that's a three barricade next turn she could use all three of her actions to get rid of that if you use an action point it'll get rid of one barricade so she could open that door next turn but uh, she'd have to use all her action points to do it and she may do that because you know we've got to we've got to pick up these lockers and and stuff so she may do that you can use your weapon on it as well so uh but um yeah, so we'll have a think about what she's going to do next turn. Anyway, that's the end of Helena Swan's turn. That's the end of the character phase as well, which means, oh yes, it's the monster phase.
And here we are at the monster phase, movement deck, crappy shuffle and a quick cut. And see where we're up to. And we get another green star. Damn it. Shattering Screech. We've had this before as well. Characters roll an imagination test. Fail, we lose insanity. We do have ward movement and uh, we do lose one of our progress. So I think we're down to two, are we? T three or two. Um, we'll know in the uh, when I do the editing and I'll flash it up. Right. Okay. Ugh. Sick of getting them. Rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, first player was Bernard. I have moved the first player token to Beatrice now, but uh, that's ready for next turn. So Bernard first. Imagination test. He's losing insanity. Hand over fist is that lad. He's already on two. He's already two steps towards being sane. So we need less than a six. We got a six. That is exactly... The it's equal or less than a six so he's fine that's great news we'll keep these hopefully they'll continue to roll crap uh, Beatrice next she needs less than a six a six or lower as well and a five brilliant she keeps her sanity her insanity sorry and then it's Nicholas he needs a seven or lower keep rolling low and that's a six yes I like these dice so he's fine as well and finally it's Helena, she's got seven imagination, so seven all on her. And a four. Oh, these lovely dice rolling low. I'm going to put you off well on side. And uh, brilliant. So we passed all of those. We didn't lose any insanity whatsoever. We've got movement of the warden. He moves across here to four. He's gone into the toilets. <laughs> Over on... Uh, Tile A, and then we've got monster movement, and we'll get two mental patients. Okay, right, we didn't actually kill anything last turn, so these are going to be two extra monsters. So you can't always kill things on your turn, so we're, we're going to have to put that right at some point and uh, try and kill some more monsters. But uh, before then, just going to go away for a moment. The monsters that we have got right now need to move. And I'm back. Who's what's moved where? Okay. Mental patient that was in the room here. He's oozed through the door and he's now in the corridor. Uh, the mental patient here. Ah, oh, one I did forget. Which is uh, the nurse. The nurse is going to move back this way because that door is now locked. Sorry, didn't see her at the top. So she's moved there. This mental patient's moved one. He's going this way because they've got to go the long way around now. This scavenger who was uh, trying to, this shortcut here, but the door turned out to be locked. He's moved two spaces back. This one's moved two spaces across. The mental patient that was on the pentacle, he's moved one. This guy, he's moved two, one, two. He's making his way that way. The nurse has oozed through this unrevealed door and she's going to start making her way that way. The mental patient, he's moved next to the door to come out next turn. And uh, this nurse here, she's making her way to that door to come through. And she's going to go up that corridor. So this is one good thing about keeping all of your um, characters together. You do get a bit of a conga line going. So uh, that helps. If they all split out all over the board... What happens is you just tend to get one character with about three or four monsters around them in each quadrant. And uh, eventually, yes, they take you down. This way, we might last a little bit longer. We shall see. Okay, so that's the uh, movement sorted out. Now we've got to do the spawn, which is two mental patients. So have we got enough room to pop that in the middle there? And uh, we'll just zoom in on it. There we go, so you can see what I actually roll. D4 and the D12. First mental patient goes to... That's a 7. A7. So we'll pick up a mental patient mini. And he goes to A7, which is here in the water tower at the top. Don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's just out of shot up there. We'll roll for the second mental patient. Where is that going? That is going to C1. That seems to be a popular place to spawn. So that's here. 
and uh, in the warden's office so those are the two spawns okay not too bad not too bad and we'll get that out of the way how has this episode gone um okay we have at least made some progress we got knocked back by a couple of green stars so we lost two progress but uh, i think we've ended up with two or three um actual progress so that's good um we managed to get a few memories so that's excellent even though only one of them was an actual sort of skill um as i said the others the you can sort of spend them for extra skills so uh, so long as you actually pick up these memories they're uh, eventually they do do you good even if it's a bad one and uh, we managed to look in a locker so that was excellent as well so uh, we managed to get ourselves a fire extinguisher hopefully that will turn up <laughs> that will do us some good at some point and uh, yeah, other than that, we we lost a couple of durability, I think, on, on the club. And we lost one on the broken glass. In the first round that we played this episode, we did kill a couple of monsters as well. So we, we've done okay. At least we didn't get one of those blue stars and just lose all of our progress again. So it does feel like we've got somewhere. As regards skills, we've only got one skill that's on cooldown. That's Lena's skill of hypnotizing eyes so that'll go down again at the start of next episode uh, down to two um, but everybody else is has got a free run at their skills which will be excellent and uh, I've just had a thought actually regarding skills somebody oh it's oh it's Helena who's got shadow step Helena who's got shadow step let's just zoom out a bit out, it's not in. Helena's got shadow step, which means she can go through walls. So she may be able to get to that locker anyway. She just uses shadow step to get in there. Searches the locker. And what's the cooldown on shadow step? The cooldown is five. So she'd be stuck in there for five turns. So perhaps I won't use that. <laughs> but um, if I'd thought about it, Perhaps what I should have done is rather than checking that door, I should have used Shadow Step. She could have searched in there next turn and then she could have checked that door. And uh, when I check that door at a later time, I might not have got three. I might not have got a barricade of three on it. Mind you saying that, I might have got a barricade of five. So uh, perhaps it's for the best. Okay. But that is a way whereby, by using Shadow Step, we can get into a room, actually, that is barricaded if we have to. Okay, right. Uh, yes, so an okay turn. Um, it's going to be nice to have some actual progress on the board, so, so that's good. Uh, still relatively healthy. We had a good roll there on one of the movement cards, whereby we lost no insanity whatsoever. I found a couple of dice that were rolling awful, and all four of us managed to get away with it, so that was good news as well. Okay, so that is it for episode three. I hope you have enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It uh, seemed to go pretty well, actually. Let's uh, discard that. That is another movement card gone. Put the deck over there. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the views. Thank you for all the subscriptions, for all the likes and the dislikes. It is extremely kind of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for uh, the help and support as well. You're all amazing. And uh, any, as usual, any mistakes, please point them out. I might have missed things like durabilities and stuff. I think I caught them all, but uh, you always say that, don't you? I'm fine. And somebody will go, no, got that wrong. You forgot this. So anything I forgot or missed, please let me know. And I will try and fix it for next turn. And other than that, anybody who's been across to Board Game Links to upvote the site, thank you very much. And anybody at BGG who has liked the video threads over there, made a comment, drop geek gold, anything of that nature, thank you so much. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you too. You're amazing. Thank you. And uh, yes, that is it for episode three. I hope you join me for episode four. But until then, this is me. Cat Weasel signing off. Toodaloo.